Welcome back for another wonderful Wisdom Wednesday session. Those who are interested to improve their brains are the ones who are always thinking about ways and means in which they can grow it as well. First, let's start with a small baby when it's born. When the baby is born, as soon as it's born, it tries number of things as it grows day by day. It knows what the mother does. Okay, if it cries, the mother will come and feed. It grows step by step, okay? And then it starts crawling, it starts walking, then it tries to talk. It, it tries to understand the culture, the, the people around the baby, the traditions, what they follow. If you imagine, and if you take a snapshot of toddler's brain, you will see in zero to three, zero to four, they learn a lot of things. If, if you talk to a baby, it knows, okay, you are a safe person or not a safe person. If a stranger comes and talks and the tradition, the culture, everything is learned by the baby. And then when the child goes to the school or when we go to the school, we learn a lot of things. We learn A is for apple, B is for banana and a lot of stuff over there. And that rote learning goes off till the 12th grade or whatever. And then we move on to the college and there we have big books and we also study that. I think it was difficult, but then we managed to finish that and that's how we came into a right. job. After we came into an IT job, the brain level, which was growing like this from a baby, and then it was like this at a particular moment in time, flattens out after we reach office, when we start work. We see that or we feel that our brain is not anymore growing. It's, it's not the feeling, it's actually the truth. The brain more or less stops growing for say, many people. And some wish, okay, that guy is blessed with a great brain. Why not me? He's blessed because he or she used the brain. And if we don't use the brain, we actually commit it to one corner. Okay. It cannot be in a corner. It's anywhere in the center, but it goes off into a corner and you don't use it at all. If you don't use your brain, it naturally deteriorates. And that's what happens to us. Like any muscle that we have in our body. For our muscles, what do we do? Hit the gym, we do the exercise, we grow our biceps, we do exercise for our triceps and then our six packs or five packs, sometimes one pack as well. So forget those one packs, okay? But then the point is, we try to exercise our body. And the same way, your brain as well needs exercise. Every single day it needs exercise something new, something innovative, something creative you need to do. You could do a puzzle, you could do Sudoku, you could try practicing juggling. I thought, okay, let me give it a try, let me learn it. For the past, maybe around six, seven weeks I've been trying. So today I will also try in front of you. If it works well and good, if it doesn't work, forget it, okay? Three tennis balls that I have, okay? Now, that's a simple technique. I fail multiple times and I pick it up, I do learn again and I keep trying again and that's how your brain as well functions. It keeps trying, it keeps functioning, it learns new things and you fail but it's okay. Initially I started off with two balls and to throw these two balls and catch it at the same time, if you can try it at home as well, you will realize your hand needs to be coordinated with your brain. Over a period of time, that skill set comes down. Start learning something so that you are able to coordinate your brain and do it. I started off with two balls and I got it. When I took the third ball, I thought I will never be able to do the juggling with the third ball at all. Over a period of maybe around three, four weeks of practice, I am able to do it comfortably. At least around 10 times I am able to catch it without letting the ball fall down. Which means your brain keeps growing or your brain is challenged and it learns and your body is always coordinating along with the brain. And that's the whole point. Let's throw these balls out. Moving forward, what else can you do to improve your brain? One more thing that you have is painting from your own imagination. Just take a paint box, whatever, I wouldn't use words, but whatever you paint, try. Just simply go ahead and try, keep trying. And even if it looks awkward, even if it looks ugly, even if other people tell, 
you, are, you need to go to the LKG or UKG or the kindergarten. It's still okay. Keep trying. And that's how you learn. Another simple technique that I have used many years back is using my left hand instead of my right hand. I started using my toothbrush in the left hand. I started using the mouse in the left hand. I learned that when you change your hands, when you swap your hands and try doing things, your brain is again challenged. So you are giving exercise to your brain. Some scientific fact now. When new neurons are being born every day, it's called neurogenesis. If you look at the picture which I, I sent to you, there's a small portion of the brain which is highlighted, which is called a hippocampus. That starts generating the neurons. In the past, the scientists, they used to think your brain stops growing as you get older. The neurons don't generate as it used to do when you're a baby said to be false right now. In 2005, they did a research. They took a mice, they kept it in a cage and they studied it for a long period of time. If you look at the picture that I have shown to you, on the top is the mice which did not have any activity. It did not do anything at all. It was a sedentary mice. The same mice, they took it and put it in another cage which had a running wheel a wheel that can move and the mice was running and running and running and as it ran and they checked the growth of the neurons and they could see those black dots if you see in the first picture and the second picture you can basically see the black dots or the neurons which are generated in the second picture is far better which means exercise even for a mice has an effect the same way if we also exercise our bodies, your brain also is getting sufficient amount of oxygen. Aerobic exercise, running, jogging, all these things are things that you can do to help improve yourself. And that's very essential. If you are living a sedentary life in front of the TV or anywhere else, it proves that your brain will also go sedentary. Your new neurons will not get generated as much as it could have been. That's number two. Number three for me, if I put it, after you ran, what happens? You're thirsty. Dehydration happens for you. What do you do? You drink water. How much percentage of water is your brain made of? It's 73% of your brain. So we are carrying basically liquid inside the skull. Most of it is liquid. That liquid needs to be replaced every time it gets dehydrated. Unfortunately, many of us don't drink sufficient water and we run into headaches, we run into different issues in our body. More than the impact of the body, the impact of the brain is higher. It becomes weak. We need to give it sufficient water for it to be hydrated all the time. What they say as per research is, you need to have three and a half liters of water every single day. How many liters of water do you drink? That's a question that you can ask yourself. The next part of it is, do you eat defines how your brain and your brain health is. There are things like avocados, which is quite good for your brain, which helps your brain to improve your walnuts and nuts the dark chocolates is something else that will help your brain to improve better. Other than these three, you also have something called as blueberries. I'm not sure how many of you know blueberries, but if you are having a chance to have blueberries, then please do also take blueberries. So avocados, walnuts, blueberries, dark chocolates, these are stuffs that help your brain to become better. Supplements, nutrients, all these are things that can also help you. But then please do consult your doctor before you take it because that needs to be done under consultation. You need to see what your level of health is and what your body really requires and only then go for it. I would like to take it up with my own story. 12 years ago, I really started suffering from memory loss. I was not able to remember a number of things. When people tell me something, I'm not, I was not able to recall those incidents immediately fully. 
and I was not sure what was happening to me. So I started researching. Okay, it was it was like not really, really pathetically bad, but I was able to realize it. Other people might not have realized it, but I was able to realize. So I started analyzing what was wrong, what was going wrong. So I started studying myself, went to the internet, googled up, and researched on it, and finally identified the culprit. The culprit was where is that? My mobile, which is what I'm using for recording right now. I used to keep my mobile next to me, next to my pillow, so that whenever it rings in the morning, I can quickly snooze it. I don't have to get up and snooze it. What I did was ringing my brain with all the electromagnetic radiation all the time, frying my brain cells. Many small children across the world. They keep their mobiles even hidden under their pillows. Not sure how many of you keep your iPads and your mobile just close to you, just maybe a feet away from your head while you're sleeping. Anyway, you're not using it. Keep it at least far away from you here. Keep it maybe around five feet or four feet away from you so that that radiation does not impact your brain. Think about it. Maybe you might have done it, but then when you keep it far away, it helps your brain to improve. I, I have seen this happening with my mom as well and when I told her this could be the reason she started keeping it away and her brain levels improved. The other part which is also a very important part is something that I would also explain with my own life again. A couple of years ago I was into a project which was a, quite a tough one as how I put it. A lot of learnings were there. I had to work and there were a lot of activities to be done. I used to come back from office, once again connect, work till around 2 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock sometimes and then go to sleep. 7, 7.30 I have to wake up because I need to get ready and then drop the kids and come to office by around 8.30, 8.45. This continued every weekday and on Fridays it was not party time, it was like real real work time. That's when I used to work till around 4 o'clock and sometimes I even remember that I used to I worked till 5 o'clock in the morning and then went to sleep. I used to accumulate my sleep and think that I could do it on weekends. So Saturdays I used to sleep till 11, 11.30. Sundays I used to sleep till around 8.30. But the point is that accumulated sleep did not help me. My body started weakening out, my brain started lowering in capacity in the sense my productivity, my efficiency, all that got reduced. What, what went wrong? The sleep cycle was disrupted. I was not having sufficient sleep. Simple fact. And if you and me, we are not taking care of our sleep, it is going to impact you. And we have to take care of the time that we give to sleep. Seven to eight hours is something that you need to have basic minimum sleep. One or two days, once in a while, you are not able to sleep, that's fine. But then if you are addicted and, and every day you are sitting in front of Netflix or Amazon or whichever channel that you have, it's not going to help you, sir. Stop spending a lot of time in the night with your work or watching TV. Get your sleep. And when you get your sleep, it helps you and helps your brain importantly. The other thing is, in the two S, the second S is stress. What do you do? You get so stressed and that impacts your brain as well. It does not reduce the neurons. You need to stop getting stressed. Don't think of stress as a stress. First of all, learn to love and live. This is me. This is absolutely me. I'll be happy. And take your life relaxed. All these things, if you are able to do, you will be able to improve your brain. There are things called as visualization that you can daydream is what they normally call it. In the previous days when we are kids, our parents used to call us, why are you daydreaming? Go get some work done, go do this, go do that. But the point is, the children when they are daydreaming, they are actually growing their brains. When they are thinking, they are visualizing different things, they are feeling those things in the brains, they are actually developing their brain muscles. And we also need to daydream. Daydream 
every day. Spend some time visualizing things for the future. You should actually visualize it in such a way that you have feelings and emotions coming in, the smell of it, the sounds, the, what you see, what you visualize and the taste of it if there is a possibility for that and feel the tingling in your body. Do all those kind, that level of visualization if you are able to do that means you are improving or increasing your brain capacity. What I'm saying is not stuff that I, I, I just thought of. They, these are all researched facts which I'm bringing out to you. So to sum it up, the first part is your brain exercise like Sudoku, juggling the balls, doing something totally new, using the mouse in the left hand, brushing your teeth with your left hand. Those are the things that you can do. Those are exercises that you can do or give for your brain. The second one is actual exercise, running, jogging or aerobics. All these increases the supply of oxygen to your brain. The third that you could do is to drink a lot of water, which your brain requires. So keep giving it water so that it's always hydrated and that helps. The fourth one is nutrition. Dark chocolates is good for you. So don't binge eat on all dark chocolates all the time. Take a small piece of dark chocolate and have it every day. If you're not a fan of dark chocolate, then you can try out avocados. You can have walnuts and vitamin supplements could also help you. The fifth one is the electromagnetic radiations, keep your mobiles and iPads and everything far away. And if you are to use for calls as well during the day, maybe use a wired headset so that you don't keep your phone right next to your brain and fry it. As much as possible, reduce the phone time and improve your brain time. Last but not the least is sleep and stress. Seven to eight hours of sleep every day, every night and reduce the amount of stress. Visualization is something as a bonus if you are able to do, but all the rest of the things, the six things that I mentioned is something that is easily in your hands. It's your choice what you would like to do if you would like to improve your brain. So challenge your brain, do these things and help your brain to improve and become better. And you will have better brains, bigger brains and great, awesome brains. Thank you so much and have a great day. Have a awesome brain filled week ahead. Thank you all very much.